Hello beautiful people of earth. Today I will be reading The Voice of Knowledge by Don Miguel Ruiz. I dedicate this book to the angels who have helped to spread the message of truth all around the world. What is truth is real. What is not truth is not real. It's an illusion, but it looks real. Love is real. It's the supreme expression of life. I will now begin chapter one, Adam and Eve, the story from a different point of view. A beautiful and ancient legend that almost everyone has heard before is the story of Adam and Eve. It is one of my favorite stories because it explains with symbolism what I will try to explain with words. The story of Adam and Eve is based on absolute truth, though I never understood it as a child. It is one of the greatest teachings ever, but I believe that most people misunderstand it. Now I will tell you this story from a different point of view, perhaps from the same point of view as the one who created it. The story is about you and me. It's about us. It's about all of humanity because, as you know, humanity is the only one living being. Man, woman, we are only one. In this story, we call ourselves Adam and Eve, and we are the original humans. The story begins when we were innocent, before we closed our spiritual eyes, which means thousands of years ago. We used to live in paradise, in the Garden of Eden, which was heaven on earth. Heaven exists when our spiritual eyes are open. It is a place of peace and joy, freedom and eternal love. For us, Adam and Eve, everything was about love. We loved and respected one another and we lived in perfect harmony with all of creation. Our relationship with God, our creator, was a perfect communion of love, which means that we communed with God all of the time and God communed with us. It was inconceivable to be afraid of God, the one who created us. Our creator was a God of love and justice. We put our faith and trust in God. God gave us complete freedom and we used our free will to love and enjoy all of creation. Life was beautiful in paradise. The original humans saw everything through the eyes of truth, the way it is, and we loved it. That is the way we used to be, and it was effortless. Well, the legend says that in the middle of the paradise stood two trees. One was the tree of life, which gave life to everything in existence, and the other was the tree of death, better known as the tree of knowledge. The tree of knowledge was a beautiful tree with juicy fruit, very tempting. And God told us, don't go near the tree of knowledge. If you eat the fruit of that tree, you may die. Of course, no problem. But by nature, we love to explore, and surely we went to pay a visit to the tree. If you remember the story, you can already guess who lived in that tree. The tree of knowledge was home of a big snake full of poison. The snake is just another symbol for what the Toltec call the parasites, and you can imagine why. The story says that the snake who lived in the tree of knowledge was a fallen angel who used to be the most beautiful one. As you know, an angel is a messenger who delivers God's message, a message of truth and love. But for who knows what reason that fallen angel no longer delivered the truth, which means he delivered the wrong message. The fallen angel's message was fear instead of love. It was a lie instead of the truth. In fact, the story describes the fallen angel as the prince of lies, which means that he was an eternal liar. Every word coming out of his mouth was a lie. According to the story, the prince of lies was living in the tree of knowledge, and the fruit of that tree, which was knowledge, was contaminated with lies. We went to that tree, and we had the most incredible conversation with the prince of lies. We were innocent. We didn't know. We trusted everyone, and there was the prince of lies the first storyteller, a very smart guy. Now, the story gets a little more interesting because that snake by itself had a whole story of its own. That fallen angel talked and talked and talked, and we listened and listened and listened. As you know, when we are children and our grandparents tell us stories, we are eager to hear everything they tell us. We learn, and it is very seductive. We want to know more. But this was the prince of lies talking. No doubt about it, he was lying, and we were seduced by the lies. We believed the fallen angel's story, and that was our big mistake. That is what it means to eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge. 
We agreed and took his word as the truth. We believed the lies. We put our faith in them. When we bit into the apple, we ate the lies that came with the knowledge. What happens when we eat a lie? We believe it and boom. Now that lie lives in us. It is easy to understand. The mind is very fertile ground for concepts, ideas, and opinions. If someone tells us a lie and we believe it, that lie takes root in our mind. There it can grow big and strong, just like a tree. One little lie can be very contagious, spreading its seeds from one person to person when we share it with others. Well, the lies went into our mind and reproduced a whole tree of knowledge inside our head, which is everything that we know. But what is it that we know? Mostly lies. The tree of knowledge is a powerful symbol. The legend says that whoever eats the fruit of the tree of knowledge will have knowledge of good and evil. They will know the difference between what is right and what is wrong, what is beautiful and what is ugly. They will gather all of that knowledge and begin to judge. Well, that is what happened in our head. And the symbolism of the apple is that every concept, every lie, is just like a fruit with a seed. When we place a fruit in the fertile ground, the seed of fruit creates another tree. That tree produces more fruits, and by the fruit, we know the tree. Now, each of us has our own tree of knowledge, which is our personal belief system. The tree of knowledge is the structure of everything we believe. Every concept, every opinion, forms a little branch of that tree, until we end up with the whole tree of knowledge. As soon as that tree is alive in our mind, we hear the fallen angel talking very loudly. The same fallen angel, the prince of lies, lives in our mind. From the Toltec point of view, a parasite was living in the fruit. We ate the fruit and the parasite went inside us. Now the parasite is living our life. The storyteller, the parasite, is born inside our head and it survives inside our head because we feed it with our faith. The story of Adam and Eve explains how humanity fell from the dream of heaven into the dream of hell. It tells us how we became the way we are right now. The story usually says that we took just one bite of the apple, but that is not true. I think we ate all of the fruit of that tree, and we became sick from being so full of lies and emotional poison. Humans ate every concept, every opinion, and every story the liar told us, even though it was not the truth. In that moment, our spiritual eyes closed, and we could no longer see the world with eyes of truth. We began to perceive the world in a completely different way, and everything changed for us. With the tree of knowledge in our head, we could only perceive knowledge, we could only perceive lies. We no longer lived in heaven, because lies have no place in heaven. This is how humans lost paradise. We dream lies. We create the whole dream of humanity, individually and collectively, based on lies. Before humans ate the fruit of the tree of knowledge, we lived in truth. We spoke only truth. We lived in love without any fear. After we ate the fruit, we felt guilt and shame. We judged ourselves as no longer good enough, and of course, we judged others the same way. With judgment came polarity, separation, and the need to punish and be punished. For the first time, we were no longer kind to one another. We no longer respected and loved all of God's creation. Now we suffered, and we began to blame ourselves, to blame other people, and even to blame God. We no longer believed that God was loving and just. We believed that God would punish and hurt us. It was a lie. It was not true. But we believed it and we separated from God. From this point, it is easy to understand what is meant by original sin. The original sin is not sex. No, that is another lie. The original sin is to believe the lies that come from the snake in the tree, the fallen angel. The meaning of the word sin is to go against. Everything that we say, everything that we do, against ourself is a sin. To sin is not about blame or moral condemnation. To sin is to believe in lies and to use those lies against ourselves. From that first sin, that original lie, all of our other sins are born. How many lies do you hear in your head? Who is judging? Who is talking? Who is the one with all the opinions? If you don't love, it is because that voice doesn't let you love. If you don't enjoy life, it's because that voice doesn't let you enjoy it. And not only that, the liar in our head has the need to express all those lies to tell its story.
We share the fruit of our tree with others, and because others have the same kind of liar, together our lies become more powerful. Now we can hate more. Now we can hurt more. Now we can defend our lies and become fanatics about following our lies. Humans even destroy one another in the name of these lies. Who is living our life? Who is making our choices? I think the answer is obvious. Now we know what is going on in our head. The storyteller is there. It is that voice in our head. The voice is talking and talking and talking, and we are listening and listening and believing every word. That voice never stops judging. It judges whatever we do, whatever we don't do, whatever we feel, whatever we don't feel, whatever everybody else does. It is constantly gossiping in our head. And what comes out of that voice? Lies. These lies hook our attention and all we can see are lies. That is the reason we don't see the reality of heaven that exists in the same place, at the same time. Heaven belongs to us because we are the children of heaven. The voice in our head doesn't belong to us. We are born, we don't have that voice. The voice in our head comes after we learn. First the language, then different viewpoints, then all the judgments and lies. Even when we first learn to speak, we speak only truth. But little by little, the whole tree of knowledge is programmed into our head, and the big liar eventually takes over the dream of our life. You see, in the moment when we separated from God, we started to search for God. For the first time, we started to search for the love we believed we didn't have. We started to search for justice, for beauty, for truth. The search began thousands of years ago, and humans are still searching for the paradise we lost. We are searching for the way we used to be before we believed in lies. Authentic, truthful, loving, joyful. The truth is we are searching for ourself. You know, it was true what God told us. If we eat the fruit, of the tree of knowledge, we may die. We did eat it, and we are dead. We are dead because our authentic self is no longer there. The one who is living our life is the big liar, the prince of lies, that voice in our head. You can call it thinking. I call it the voice of knowledge. Points to ponder. The mind is fertile ground for concepts, ideas, and opinions. If someone tells us a lie and we believe it, that lie takes root in our mind and can grow big and strong like a tree. One little lie can be very contagious, spreading its seeds from person to person when we share it with others. Knowledge goes into our mind and reproduces a structure inside our head, which is everything that we know. With all that knowledge in our head, we only perceive what we believe. We only perceive our own knowledge. And what is it that we know? Mostly lies. Once the tree of knowledge is alive in our mind, we hear the fallen angel talking very loudly. That voice never stops judging. It tells us what is right and what is wrong, what is beautiful and what is ugly. The storyteller is born inside our head. It survives inside our head because we feed it with our faith. Heaven exists when our spiritual eyes are open, when we perceive the world through the eyes of truth. Once lies hook our attention, our spiritual eyes are closed. We fall from the dream of heaven and begin to live the dream of hell. Heaven belongs to us because we are the children of heaven. The voice in our head doesn't belong to us. When we are born, we don't have that voice. Thinking comes after we learn. First the language, then different points of view, then all the judgments and lies. The voice of knowledge comes as we accumulate knowledge. Before we eat the lies that come with knowledge, we live in truth. We only speak truth. We live in love without any fear. Once we have knowledge, we judge ourselves as no longer good enough. We feel guilt, shame, and the need to be punished. We begin to dream lies, and we separate from God. In the moment when we separate from God, we begin to search for God, for love we believe we don't have. Humans are continually searching for justice, for beauty, for truth, for the way we used to be before we believed in lies. We are searching for our authentic self. Thank you for supporting and watching my channel. Liking, leaving comments, and sharing would be very beneficial for growing my channel. If you liked my videos, please subscribe and share this audiobook as it will be very greatly appreciated. 
I hope you all can find the courage to implement the advice in this book in your daily activities today and forever. Thank you again and goodbye.